the book, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter five, chapter five, the Gospel of Matthew. God bless you, Brother Ron Hart. Happy New Year, Amen. God bless. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse thirty-seven. We're talking about authentic relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and how we're gonna maintain authentic relationship. Amen. And develop authentic relationship. Matthew 5 and 37 reads, But let your communication be yea, yea. Let your nay be nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh evil. You may take your seat. That is the King James translation. You will hear other translations that say it real simple. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Uh, it's interesting, it's interesting that this part of, of, of the text, Matthew 5 is also the same part of the Bible in which Jesus does the Beatitudes where he says, blessed are the meek and blessed are the long-suffering. And in the same chapter where he starts telling people who are blessed in his sermon upon the mount, it, it, at the same time he says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. In 2017, we learn many phrases like fake news. We learned that everybody's yay is not yay. Everybody's nay is not nay. Amen. But God has a, a word for us today called the resolution solution. The resolution solution. Y'all know it's New Year's Eve. Praise God. Great Bethesda. New Year's Eve. And so most of us are thinking about the same thing right now. We're thinking about next year. We're thinking about next year and, and New Year's. And, and you know, January, the word January, the name comes from the Roman god Janus. That's where it came from. And, and, and how they used to worship Janus. Amen. But, but the idea of New Year, the first people to actually celebrate New Year were Babylonian people. And it wasn't in January, it was in like March. When the new planting season came, and they would worship uh, their little gods, little G, when, in the new planting season. And, and one of the one of the customs that they had was that they would make they would promise to repay any debts they had the previous year. When the year began, you had to return any tools you borrowed from your neighbor the previous year. You had to give them back the five dollars you borrowed, or a cup of sugar, or whatever it was that you had to return these things. And so that's where we get this idea of New Year's resolutions from. Right. And then in the new year, I'm going to do something, amen, new. And, and many of us in this room make New Year's resolutions. 40% of our America makes New Year's resolutions. 40%. Now, I looked at these, these things, oh, and, and that's approximately 9 million people. 9 million people every year. They say, in 2018, I'm going to do different than I did in 2017. I'm going to do something different. 37% of them say, I'm going to work out. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get healthy. Praise the Lord. 32% say, I'm going to lose weight. I might not work out, but I'm just going to push back from the table a little bit. 25% of them say, I'm not going to go shopping no more this year. I'm going to save more and spend less. One out of four say that. <laughs> Can I say Rick, we live with the other three. <laughs> now, only 19% of the people who make resolutions, Sean said that they was going to resolve to spend more time with their family. More people resolve to save money than to spend time with huh, resolutions. Now, now the, the funny thing is that when you check back on most of these people by April, four months, a third of the way in, only 8% of them have kept their resolution. In April, we, we're not talking about June, we're not talking about August, we're talking about right quick. Only 8% out of those 9 million people actually stuck to their diet, actually kept working out, actually stayed about the mall. Huh? So what happened? What, what, what happened? God is saying that, okay, if that number, got to be some Christians in there. Got to be some people who sit in the pews of the houses of God who say, yes, I'm going to do something, and then they don't do it. Okay. Matthew said, let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. 
and when you make a promise, you got to keep your promise. Yes. And all a resolution is is a promise you make to yourself. Uh, too, too many of us, we, too many of us live in a society where it's okay to change your mind, mm -hmm. even if that means you don't keep your word. Mm -hmm. and that, that wasn't the way that it used to be. It used to be. It didn't matter if I gave my word that I was going to come, even if a better opportunity presented itself, I had to come. I done gave my sir. I done gave my word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got tickets to the playoff game. But I told Johnny I was going to cut his grass. Mm. But the playoff game and the grass. <laughs> Used to be a time when, when, when I done gave a word, so I got to go. But now Johnny will understand. Yeah, he sure. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture for Johnny. Amen. <laughs> now, now, now. When you think about resolutions and, 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 and how Christians deal with resolutions, I, I first led Abraham Lincoln said, always bear in mind that our own resolution to succeed is more important than any other. Of all the resolutions we make to lose weight, to work out, to save money, of all the resolutions that we make, it's all, the resolution that no matter what I do, I will succeed. That is the most important. That I'm going to see it through no matter what it is. That is what's most important, according to, according to President Lincoln. I, I like this one here. The Russian writer, y'all, Leo Tolstoy. Y'all, he wrote War and Peace. He says that to be maintained, the changes in our lives must come from the impossibility for us to live otherwise. Rather than the mental resolution to try something new. The change, the change in your life has to come because you're tired of the way you used to do things. Yes. That's the only way it's going to stay permanent. It can't be a decision for one time. It can't be a, a, a oh, I feel all right, I, I, let me try this. But it's got to be a move from something that you know is negative. And so I, I can't go back. Yes. Amen. I believe a Tolstoy <laughs> stepped on something right there. So, so, more people make resolutions than watch the Super Bowl. But less people keep resolutions than watch the presidential debates. So we ask ourselves, why, what is this thing? The word resolution comes from another word, resolve. And resolve means strength over time. So resolution, which means a firm, I'm trying to say it right, a firm decision to do something or not to do something comes from strength over time. It's not just a decision, it is I'm going to stick to this decision over time. Just to leave you one of the most chilling things that happened to me uh, in, in ministry, I talked to a, a brother of mine who was in the midst of a divorce. And I asked him about his vows. I said, what about the vow, the promise, the resolution that you made with your wife for your family and friends of the Lord. And he said, B, at the time when I said it, I meant it. Oh, wow. And he said, that was, his, that was his answer. He said, when I stood up there, I meant for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But over time, something happens and twists and turns, but God is calling Christians to be different. Yes. And then over time, not just the first three months, but over the span of time, Proverbs 20 and 25 says it like this. It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy and after vows to make inquiry. It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy and after vows to make inquiry. What does that mean, Pastor? The Lord expects his children to be people of our word. And the best way to keep your word is to think about your word before you give it. Amen. Right? Think about what it is that you're promising before you promise it. Don't make parents, don't make promises that you can't keep. So when they say, Mama, can I go? Let me think about it for a second. Hold on. <laughs> it is okay to say that. We see so many times we in such a rush to see the smile on their face. Oh, we're in such a rush not to hurt their feelings. Oh, no. That we say things without counting up the cost all the way. Right? But, but it's okay. God is saying that Christians in all of our endeavors, think about it because 
It, devour, it is a snare to a man mm -hmm. to devour with that which is holy and after make inquiry. Mm -hmm. If you were to, if to look at the NIV version, they said it this way. It is a trap to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider one's cause. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so, so we make these resolutions and we say, you know what? I'm going to run 10 miles a day. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you ain't never run 10 miles. <laughs> when you was young, you ain't run 10 miles a day. So why would you say 10 miles when you can't do two laps? Right. <laughs> but we do that. We do that. We do that. And then we fall short, and guilt comes in, and shame comes in, and then we write, I'm never going to eat another donut as long as I live. Right. That's it. No donuts. 2018, no donuts. Right. <laughs> I know, me, the Lord know. The Lord would shake the roof if I said that. Brian, I'm going to try my very best, Lord. I'm going to reduce the number of <laughs> but no, no, no. That is what he's talking about. Think about what you can do. Think about with he, what he wants you to do. Amen. Because check it out. Jonathan Edwards, he said it this way. Pastor Jonathan Edwards talked about a Christian's resolution. And I like this. Y'all put this in your remembrance. There's two resolutions that a Christian should hold. Two resolutions. The first resolution is, number one, I will live for God. Yes. All right now. Amen. Resolution one, I will live for God. And resolution two says, even if no one else does, I still will All right. live for God. Uh, think Because what happens is a lot of us get turned around when other people do other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kills your diet is when people when they bring Krispy Kremes to work. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't bring no Krispy Kremes. I wasn't even checking for no Krispy Kremes. But I came in the faculty lounge and look what was on the table spread out before me. Oh, right. All different kinds of Krispy Kremes. You know what kind of devil would do? <laughs> Didn't have to pay for them to all had napkins. Everything spread right out there. Walked in that room. Lord help. Yeah. See, but, but understand, that's the way the devil tests you. Okay. Tests your resolve. Right? He wants to see, did you mean what you said? Did you really think about it? Okay. If everybody else is eating donuts, mm, did you try to mm, live up right? Yeah, Are you still gonna hold to your word? Because, of course, donuts are a pretty, pretty easy one, pretty innocent one. But what about if the donut has long legs, yeah. pretty eyes? Do you still resolve? What if, you, what if ain't nobody going to find out? What if there's some place where you think it's discreet? Are you still going to resolve? What about, what about that liquor bottle? Huh? What if you pour it in a coffee cup? So nobody will see it. Uh, what if you mix it with some orange juice? Give it another name. Amen. Come on. It, but when you resolve, you still resolve. No matter what anybody else does, I still will. Everybody else at this table has decided what they're going to drink. But I still will. If, if I'm the only one. Now you're talking about resolution. And that's what God that's what God is calling his people, yes. his people into. Somebody get your Bible real quickly and turn to Nehemiah. I'm almost done. I'm about to go to there. Told y'all I'm going to get out y'all way. Amen. 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 Because I want y'all to come back tonight. <laughs> He's like, you might be in my way tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The book of Nehemiah is the story of resolve. You need to understand that you can't hold on without Jesus. Amen. Except the Lord holds your arms, hold your hands to the plow, you can't hold on. So we ask God to be with me. All along this pilgrim journey, I want the Lord to walk with me. The only way that I won't get lost is if you walk with me. Right. Uh, Lord, I don't need no directions. I need you to hold my hand right. and carry me through the donut aisle. <laughs> I need you to walk with me, Jesus. 
Did the food line walk with me? Right. I, you're not going to have to, I want you to understand, no matter what the temptation might be, we have to have God walking with us and we're going to make it through. Yes. See, understand, the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that is our resolve. Yes. That is, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Without that joy, we don't have no strength. And I, and real simple, if we're going to make it through 2018, how are we going to do it? The same way we did 2017. All right. <laughs> Walking with the Lord. Because the old song said, we've come this far by faith. Yeah. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting every step of the way. Yeah. Holding on to his hand. And, the, and so it looked like I'm doing it by myself. People look at me <clears throat> and they'll say, Brian, you show sure off holding on. But really, I'm just holding on to the hand of the Lord. And yeah. he's guiding me through. You just can't see his hand, so it looks like I'm walking pretty good. All right. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it look, it, God will make you look good. Yes, Come on. Ken Jones had a song to say, God looks good on you. Yeah. He really, really does. Uh -huh. Look at people who've served the Lord for a long time. Oh, God. Look at them. He, he, he holds you up. He, he don't let you age like those people yeah. who don't hold on to the Lord. Right. He don't let your bank account dry up like it. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. He don't let your family relationships shrivel up. Yeah. Uh, you follow me? Yeah. So, so, so God looks good on us yeah. and he makes us look good. Yes. And so we thank him this morning yes. for making us look good. Yes. He makes it look like we can reap results. Yeah. If you didn't know better, you would think I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I tell the people that all the time. I, my good friend Pastor McLean and I would speak once a week. And he said that to me one time. He said, you know what? If people didn't know, if I didn't know better, I think I know what I was doing. I said, you know what? I know exactly how you feel. Exactly how you feel. Yeah, people look at the pastor like he knows what he's doing all the time. He don't. Yeah. Now, any pastor who tells you knows what he's doing all the time is not telling the truth. Sometimes I say, Lord, what should I do? Right. Amen. I don't know which way to go. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't understand. And, and people at certain churches have a lot of questions. And they will come to say, Pastor, what are we going to do about so and so? And they want an answer right then and right there. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, uh, praise God. <laughs> and the Lord will say, boom. Oh, yeah, and then y'all say, Pastor, show his deed. <laughs> but me, I'll be real with y'all. But the Lord comes in, that's the way he's always dealt with me. And that's the way he always deals with all of us, if we be honest. But the key is you got to listen. Yes. Okay. When you're faced with a decision to make, given your word, ask the Lord first. Yes. Yes. Ask the Lord, is this what you want me to do? Yes. Is this where you want me to be? Remember, the Christian has one resolution. I will serve the Lord. Oh, yes. yes, God. Thank you. Resolution two, even if don't nobody else serve the Lord, I, I still I will serve the Lord. I'm going to do what's right, even if everybody else is doing wrong. Yeah. And you'll find, you'll find, Sister Serena, you blessed my soul this morning. Yes. You blessed my soul this morning. Yes. You don't understand how God, well, God uses you all the time. But, but how God, what you did, somebody could have been sitting in the stand, Serena. My God. Who looked down and saw some little girls pray, or young ladies, uh -huh. praying. Mm. They knew what it was. Yeah. They knew that God was on this track. So somebody was looking, and it was like, God, in my life I'm broken, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm hurt, and I don't, where are you, God? And they looked down, and he's on the track. All right. All right, all right. I went to a track meet, and I found the Lord. Mm. I went to the Dunkin' Donuts aisle, and I found the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I went to the hospital room, and I found the Lord. He, he hides out in the greatest places. Oh, yes. And he shows himself up when somebody needs him the most. Yeah. And so he, he demonstrates himself through our resolve. Because see, when you hold on to God at a time when everybody expects you to let go, then everybody gets to see God. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, there's plenty of times, plenty of times when, when it makes sense to let go. Yes. Have you ever seen uh, the young man, bless my soul, uh, in, Char in Charleston, South Carolina? Mother was one of the people who was viciously gunned down in the church. And he said, <laughs> young boy, couldn't have been more than 18, 19, baseball player. Okay. He said, my heart is hurting, mm -hmm. but my mother said that God wants us to forgive. All right. yeah. That's what she always taught us. That's what they was talking about in the church the day God took her. Mm -hmm. 
said, so I got to forgive. Not because I want to, but because mama said yeah. that Jesus wanted me to. My, my, my. I said, my yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, even when your heart is broken, we have a resolve in Jesus. Yes. Jesus is the resolution solution. Yes, Turn to Nehemiah, Nehemiah 6. I'm going to get up and hurry up, Ron. Hurry up. So that Ed can hurry up and come back. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let me hurry up. <laughs> Brother Ed, praise the Lord. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. We are having watch night service tonight. Praise yes. the Lord at 10 30. Why are y'all asking big? You're excited? <laughs> praise the Lord. We have some guest speakers coming. The Lord has brought with a, a word from on high. Amen. And we look forward to hearing from the men and women of God. Amen. It ain't me. Oh, it ain't me. Turn to chapter 6 of Nehemiah. And you got to remember who Nehemiah is. We talked about Nehemiah a long time ago when the message called Shovels and the Swords a long time ago. But Nehemiah was a Jewish man. He was a, 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 an Israelite who, during the captivity of Persia, worked for the king. And he was the cupbearer for the king. Right? And, and that, but that, you think that means he was just a servant of the king, but that means he was a trusted ally of the king. Uh, understand now, understand. I told you resolve. If you show resolve, God will put you in strategic places. If, he, if you show that he can, if you show God that he can trust you, right? If you can trust him to the point where he can trust you, hmm. you'll be amazed where he will put you. My God. The reason that you made the track team was so that he could use you. Yeah. The reason he let you be in that place was so he could use you. Yeah. And so when you start realizing why the reason that I'm here is so that God can use me. Yeah. The only reason he let me into this college was so God could use me. The only reason he gave me this job or planted me in this uni uniform or whatever it is, is so that God could use me. Huh? Then your resolve becomes sure. So Nehemiah was in a place that he wasn't supposed to be in. He was the trusted ally of the king. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that during that time, the, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. Yeah. And he was very sad. You know, the temple was not just a church. It was their center of life, of commerce. It's where they shopped, it's where they socialized, it's where they worshiped, they did everything, right? And so to destroy the Jewish temple was to destroy basically the Jewish community. And so he was very, very sad when he heard this back in the king's castle. He heard what had happened. And so he asked the king, can I go back and rebuild the temple? Now he should have said no. The king should have said no. But when you show resolve, God will make ways out of no ways. He will make opportunities where doors have been closed. Huh? Okay, I'll come over here. Because I think somebody over here might understand what I'm saying. I need somebody who's over 60 or 55 years old. How many times has God made ways that was closed to black folks? <laughs> He, he will make a way yes. out of no way. Uh, we're not even supposed to be sitting in this building. He will make a way Amen. out of no way. Yes. If you show resolve, if you hold on to him, he will hold on to you. Oh, yes. oh, right, write that down. I like that. Yes. If you hold on to him, yes. he will hold on to you. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Nehemiah was holding on to the Lord, and so the Lord was holding on to him. So when he went to the king and said, King, can I go rebuild the temple? He said, Sure. Not only can you go, but I'm going to give you supplies to go with. I'm going to give you permission to go. I'm going to write a note and a decree so that every place you go, they're going to treat you right. Yeah. right. Huh? They're not going to hold you up. They're not going to treat you like a slave. You are with me. My name is on you, so they're going to let you through. And if you need anything, they're going to take care of you. Right. right. So now, because he had resolve and God was holding on to him, he went from a place he wasn't supposed to be doing something he wasn't supposed to do. See, it's ready. God will let you win the race. Mm. Why? Because he wants you to praise him in the winner's circle. Mm. <laughs> it ain't about surrender. It's about praise in the winner's circle. Right. So as long as you keep praising, guess what's going to happen? You'll keep winning. Yeah. But as soon as you say, hey, I must be real fast, 
It must be me. Uh, oh. Right? So, right. And so how would the how would the devil try to trap you? He'll give you a commercial with Nike. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh, come see Serenity in the new Nike. <laughs> the little girls around Serenity can have your autograph. Serenity, I want to be just like you. And as soon as Serenity believes that, that's when you start losing. But as, soon as, as long as you give glory to God like Nehemiah was doing, he took him through, took him through all of these things. He goes back to the temple and he begins to rebuild. Uh, first, he builds the gate, um, the, the fence rather. Not very tall. He and a few Jews, they begin to put things together. God don't need a whole lot of people, y'all. He really doesn't. He never has. Uh, uh, I need you to find me in the Bible where God took 100,000 people and built something. Oh. Ever. Matter of fact, 100,000 is too many. Ask Gideon. Oh, yes. It, it, because if it's that many people, everybody wants some credit. Mm -hmm. so, no, 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 no. I don't need all y'all. I don't need all y'all. Y'all go away. Go away. God takes a few people, a few Jews who are willing to work, a few Christians in Clinton, Maryland, who are willing to work, and he builds the greater Bethesda fence mm -hmm. around Clinton, Maryland. My, my, my. Huh? And they begin, so, so as he, they were minding their business, they didn't bother no other churches, mm -hmm. they didn't bother nobody, they didn't ask nobody for nothing. They were minding their business. But something about Niagara's, I'm not sure what it is, man. You ain't got to bomb them. You ain't got to send for them. They got something to say. Oh, yeah. Right? They're not helping you. You're not even on their property. You're not in their way. They still got something to say. Something to say. My God, my God. One of these days, I asked the Lord, I want to talk to President Obama. Oh my I do, I do. Now, I still want to talk to him. Yes. I want to sit down and say, President Obama, just between me and you, mm -hmm. what, was, what was it really like? Yeah, he, he going to be like, they, everybody has something to say. <laughs> Every time I went anywhere, they had something to say. Yep. CNN had something to say. The church had something to say. The Democrats and the Republicans, the women, the men, everybody had something to say. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine. If I say yes, then the no-sayers get mad. If I say no, then the yes-sayers get mad. Everybody got something to say. People ain't got nothing to do, always got something to say. Right. So, so turn, turn to chapter 6. Nehemiah is building, building the fence. Chapter 6, verse 1. Now it came to pass when Sen, Baron, and Tobiah, and Geshem the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had not set up the, the doors upon the gates. When they heard that I was building, uh, when they heard that I was doing, you could substitute that word building for doing. So, right, you, people always got something to say when you're doing for the Lord. Not talking about the Lord, not thinking about the Lord, not planning for the Lord. But when you're doing, when you actually do the doing part, now people got something to say. He wasn't even finished. He told them. He said, when they heard that the wall was built and there was no holes left in it, as long as they thought I couldn't do it, they were happy. Yeah. Then when they saw the plan was coming to fruition, now they got something to say. Yeah. Huh? My, I can speak to greater because the church of God in Christ. People, as long as we were saying, oh, the Lord's calling us out. Yeah, you go ahead and be blessed. But then when you go out, yes. they got something to say. Yes. Oh, you don't know. Brown, they shouldn't have left. Too fast, too young. What they going to do? Mm -hmm. They should have stayed at the spring. Mm -hmm. Why would they leave the spring? Mm -hmm. huh? And then when they find out they, the Lord has built a fence around, now they got even more to say. Mm -hmm. Friends, neighbors, right there. Mm -hmm. Keep going, kid, keep going. Verse 2 says that, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. Uh -huh. now, now, the word mischief is, is nasab in Hebrew, means uncertainty. Uh -huh. They thought to bring uncertainty to what I was certain about. Uh -huh. The easiest way to mess up your resolution 
is to listen to somebody without their without the message. Yeah. Amen. You know, there's a new study that says donuts are good for you. <laughs> if you eat only donuts, you'll get the same number of calories if you right. Oh, don't make up something. You know I ain't supposed to eat these donuts. <laughs> oh, my you can find the internet can tell you anything. Jelly the jelly bean diet. Can't be no diet. We're just jelly beans. <laughs> but it is, if you look it up, the jelly bean diet. Really? Yeah, right. But, it, but I am resolved I'm not gonna eat these donuts. I know I don't care what your study said. I don't care how many people in this factory lounge are eating them. I am resolved that I am not. I'm I'm resolved I'm gonna live for the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right now. Right. I, 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 that, I made a decision. And, and, and that's it. That's it. I, I don't care who don't go. I don't care if wife don't go. I don't care if children don't go. If brother don't go. Sister don't go. If church don't go. I don't care who don't go. I'm determined. Oh, yes. Yes. And if I got to go all by myself, uh -huh. I'm going to go. And that's where Nehemiah was. If he had to build a fence all by himself, yeah. uh, he didn't ask nobody to come help him. They decided to come help him. Uh, and so as he was building Sam Battle and Tobiah and guess who said, come on, come on, come talk to me, man, come down. Mm -hmm. Very famously, Nehemiah responds. He said, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Real simple. Why should I listen to you? Amen. I've been listening to God. Why should I listen to you? Right, right. Mm -hmm. If I hold on to your hand, what do I get? Mm -hmm. If I hold on to God's hand, I get joy, unspeakable joy. If I hold on to Jasmine's hand, what do I get? Mm -hmm. right. And so many times, we fall for the okie doke, mm -hmm. the old banana in the tailpipe routine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we fall for it. Oh, come on down. Because if you, if you give your, call your name in lights, if you'll come on down. We'll build you a new building if you'll come on down. We'll, we'll call you, right? We'll put this amount of money in your account if you'll call. We'll give you a new position if you'll come on down. Come on down and talk to us. But it's really just mischief. Nassab. The, the whole point is just to take you off my God the task. Mm -hmm. And it said in verse 4, they tried it because he said no. Because some of us are good at it. Some of us are good at no the first day. Huh? Some of us are good at knowing the first day and even the second day, but after a while our resolve starts to weaken. Said so they tried him four times. Four times. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. <coughs> then sent Simbalad his servant unto me in like manner a fifth time, this time with an open letter in his hand. Yeah. It's got to be official because it's an open letter. This means there was official obstacles in his way. You ever had official obstacles in your way? Amen. Not just people talking about you. I'm talking about the Prince George's County seal in the corner of the paper. <clears throat> official obstacles in your way. God is saying, don't be afraid of official obstacles. I am God, he yes. says. Yes. The heart of the king rests in my hand. Yes. The heart of the president rests in my hand. Yes. The heart of, of the emperor, whatever leadership you fall under, that man or that woman's heart rests in my hand. Yes. Why are you tripping off official obstacle? Because they said it on the internet doesn't mean it's bigger than God. Yes. Because right. somebody mailed it to your house with the official seal doesn't mean it's bigger than God. Because they sent him an open letter. And it said, verse 5, I mean verse 6, wherein it was written, it is reported among the heathen. So why should even listen? Because it's heathens talking. Huh? We Christians, we spend too much time arguing about what heathens are saying. We spend too much time worrying about what the world's gonna think of us. Huh? We have to do, we have to change because the world doesn't understand. They're not supposed to understand us. We are peculiar people. They're supposed to see us and want to be different, not to want to make us look like them. Huh? We got it twisted because we're losing our resolve. We got it twisted and we're trying to make ourselves look more like the world instead of making the world want to look like us. As long as that's the case, <laughs> it's twisted. It said, it's reported among the heathen and Gashmu saith it. Yeah, I don't even know who Gashmu is. 
They said gas will be four or cents. Who's gas move? Why do we care what they say? Gas move is they. They say. Somebody said. You know, Pastor, they're angry. Gas move. Who's that? Right? It said, saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. So now you're going to tell me what I think. Uh, that's what the world's trying to do. The world's trying to check you, cause you mischief by questioning your motives. They want you to question your motives. Yes. They want you to say, eh, was that really God? Maybe I should have done it. You only live once. Mm. Huh? You know, donuts of all the things that you could do, Brian, donuts are very small. <laughs> Some people do drugs. You don't do drugs. It's just a donut. But I resolved I was not going to eat donuts. It doesn't have, and my yay got to be yay, and my nay has to be nay. If it's not going to be yay on donuts, how's it going to be yay with my wife? Mm, my God. How do you do anything? My, I'm BJ Barney back there laughing. Coach told me that a long time ago. How you do anything is how you do everything. God is calling for our yay to be yay and our nay to be nay in everything. When we do our homework, when we do our classwork, when we do our, our, our relationships with our family, whatever it is, God is calling our, us to be people of resolve. Uh, he said, did y'all want to rebel? You think you cute. That's why you built this wall. You built this wall so they will call your name. You came out so you could be a wonder, right? You just want people to look at you. <laughs> And thou hast appointed prophets to preach unto thee in Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now shall it be reported the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Still, they want me to come now. Huh? Yeah. But, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. God is saying in 2018, the solution to the resolution is Jesus. Yes. Right. Huh? You know what you and Jesus talked about. It don't matter what the gash move said. We have to stop letting other people talk us out of what we know God has told us That's to do. Right. Yes. What we know he's told. In 2017, God has given instructions to people in this room right here. For this ministry and beyond, God has called us to great things. And we've been letting the devil and the gash move tell us it's not time yet. You're immature. You're too small. You don't have this. You don't have that. Even official obstacles have come in the way. God's saying, lay those things aside and hold on to me. Yes. If you hold on to me, then I will hold on to you. Oh, yeah. 2017 has been a brilliant year for us. Yes. And we honor the Lord. But 2018, we have the resolution solution. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Stand to your feet. Amen.